I don't know if you guys remember, but when you were a kid, uh, the teacher would often make you learn how to do divisions by hand, multiplications by hand, and then only significantly later you would find out that you could use a calculator to do the same thing. Well, um, we are going to have a little bit of a moment of that. And that is because we're going to use a tool for Java that is called JavaFX Scene Builder. And if we go to Google and look for the latest version, in this case, as of today, it is 2.0, you can download the tool and um, more or less looks in my Mac like this. And it's a, a tool that on the left hand side, it contains a series of widgets and elements, uh, a document hi hierarchy and the properties of those items that we create. So this is the thing that we can create. So for example, we can create um, let's, a split uh, pane in a vertical way, we, uh, similar to what we had first. Then we can add, say, in, from the control, after we create, you know, like our first thing, it has two anchor panes, if we wanted to have it via anchor pane, or we can just even remove them. And we can then add a label. Then we can add under it a text field. And then we can add under it a grid view, grid pane, where we can start adding buttons just the same way that we did that little uh, phone dial we can start adding buttons 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 uh, buttons and on the left and right hand side we can you know always change say for example this thing we can put it to one and the text you can change the font so that way you can make it like i don't know um bold and italic and you can do all sorts of things with that anyway so on this side you choose what you want to add to it on this it tells you the hierarchy for example the split split pane with um, a label text field and grid pane label text field grid pane and then under the grid pane four more buttons and for each of the things that we have selected here you can either do uh, phone you can change the properties according to what you would like to do and even attach CSS and what and, and other things uh, you can add certain tool I mean certain effects and once you are done uh, it will create an FXML file that if we just do um, test and if we open it even with any other text editor And we open it with any editor desktop. It's just an XML file that contains all the properties that we wanted for this. So um, if we wanted to use our IntelliJ tool, then we can take this to an MVC uh, model type of thing. And the cool thing here is that we don't necessarily have to use just this tool and then import it to IntelliJ. What we can do is that we can create a new project and create, select JavaFX, JavaFX application, and maybe just call it JavaFX sample. And once it creates it, we get our in our source area, just if we make it as big as we can, uh, in our source area, we get a package called sample, the main, the execution, which has like all the basic stuff, the controller, 
and the FXML sample. So if we look at the sa FXML sample, it is actually pointing to our sample controller class. And that's going to be handy in, in a little bit. But if we want to see this file once we open the sample FXML, we're going to have a text tab and a scene builder tab. And in that scene builder tab, we can, if when we select it, it's going to take a second to load, but we will have the plugin installed um, and ready to connect to it. All right. So um, when we start with something like this, uh, we get like a grid pane as the initial component. Um, technically we can just, I want to change it so that the scroll pane is the parent and I don't want this to be the main thing. So I'm going to just switch it so that, so if we went here, I can actually just change this to be a scroll pane and we kill this guy and make it a, an actual scroll pane. And we'll remove the ones that the parts of the scroll pane that are not really any valid. And now we have our scroll pane. I mean, this is just seriously like a quick hack, or I can just essentially design it with the other guy and open it up with say something like this guy, which I had it here and I can just copy paste it. And if I did that, then I can also add effects, semicolon controller, sample dot controller. And that essentially makes it what we had, absorb what we had from the past. So we can then keep modifying it here um, and changing certain things. I mean, there are certain things that are gonna be like a little bit hacky. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's go as much as I can with this um, there are certain things that are going to be a little bit more of a hack um, because well basically um, not everything was made into here so some certain things you have to actually change it like for example when we added the controller like it's not really there's nothing really on here that we can say oh the controller here should be connected to it. So there are certain things that you definitely have to have as a, as a hack, but the, the editor actually gives you like a good, a good, uh, way of controlling it. So in here, if we, since we already have the controller, we can actually start, um, linking certain things to code. So for example, if I do, um, public void button pressed and I put an event from JavaFX event EVT system dot out dot print LN. So I am essentially doing the exact same thing as if I had a button being pressed. Uh, I can now, um, execute my main controller. Oh no. One thing I, we forgot is to link it and I gotta stop this guy. So now we can go and tie this button. Oops. Once it, it takes us a second and then you can do on mouse clicked and you can select button pressed, which is the button press on this controller. Again, the reason why this appears is because we connected in the text side of things, and this is done automatically when you just create it, but if you don't, for whatever reason, you need to connect to which class is going to have the methods that are going to respond to that. So if we go again and run the main class, this is the entry point, so that's why I'm running that one. So now I have this guy here, and I can, every time I, say, I get the button pressed, I can reference the other, uh, the, the, the controller. And I can actually, 
if, you, if I want to do something where I can re reference, um, like button b equals evt dot get source, and then we ta tag it to, we could cast it to a button, and then we import, oh, we import this guy, just to make sure that everything is imported because it was read otherwise, and then do b dot get text. And if we run this guy, actually let's add to the scene builder so that button two, button two, let's change the properties and say, and oh, let's change the code side of things and put on mouse pressed, button pressed. This one we're gonna name it to three. And then this guy is four. And we do the same thing for this guy where on button pressed, on mouse clicked, we can do button pressed and then on mouse click button press. So all these buttons are pointing to the same function in the controller. And the controller is actually going to print who was the source just because of we are able to get the the source of the source of the event. So now that it loaded, it's right here. I can button press one, two, three, and four. And it's the exact same function what he's doing that um, part. Now, what if I wanted to have a reference to the controller so that, for example, when I press a button, I add that text into the into the text uh, the text field so I can do something like uh, public or private um, text text field and text or text field so if we want to uh, reference it we can do fxml just to um, give the uh, editor the capacity of like finding of finding where the variable is and we set up a comment that it's fx id equals um, I don't know let's say uh, text my text field and if we go back here, we can then reference it. Uh, FXID, let's just make sure that we, oh, we gotta add the semicolon. And in some cases, you just need to reload this guy. So, come on thing. We go into the code tab identity and now we see this drop down and we reference it to that to the text field that it it is this so this variable is going to change to this so if we want it then to since we're connecting it we can actually change this um, this dot text field equals b dot dot set text let's actually let's get the text first string previews equals get text and then we're going to set the text which is previews plus b dot get text which essentially we're appending whatever we had before plus whatever the button value had so if we then run this, we get a minimal app with minimum effort, which is kind of cool. 